go to the next part of this because it's hilarious. Oh Put this God. up there on the screen, this please. Is too which is that the members of the Saudi royal family <laughs> are very upset by Elon Musk's offer. Here is what uh, Prince al Talal says. I don't believe the proposed offer by Elon Musk comes close to the intrinsic value of Twitter, given its growth prospects. Being one of the largest shareholders, the kingdom and I reject uh, this offer. Uh, yeah, the <laughs> kingdom of Saudi Arabia revealing. rejecting our offer. Very revealing. Elon replied, uh, let's go ahead and put this up there. Because there's a lot to say, and it reveals a lot about our broken financial system and some of the Saudi influence I've talked about here. Interesting. Just two questions, if I may. How much of Twitter does the kingdom own, directly and indirectly? Number two, what are the kingdom's views on journalistic freedom of speech? I think we all know the answer to that question. <laughs> you know, this is I, I didn't even put it together until this all happened, but Brian Fogel's documentary, The Dissident, showed me that a massive proportion of Saudi citizens are on Twitter. Right. And the reason why is it they have anonymity and a lot of Saudi politics happens in terms of Twitter discussion. There are- oh, you've experienced yes, that directly. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. They're very <laughs> racist. You can uh, figure that out. But the imams issue fatwas on Twitter. Uh, it's really become a, a central part of Saudi discourse. And the reason that MBS and the Saudi government were so obsessed with Jamal Khashoggi and other Saudi dissidents is because they have big Twitter followings. They were living here in the West and some of their stuff was re-entering Saudi discourse mm. and bringing dissidents against the kingdom. Now, the kingdom has responded by, you know, if you think Russian troll farms are bad, the Saudi troll farms are a whole other level. They're always like, and I've experienced this firsthand, they're like, MBS is the greatest, you know, and they'll call me some darkie or whatever. Uh, uh, d whatever people are saying about Indians these days. I don't even know what the slur <laughs> is. I don't particularly care. So thank God I don't live over there. But what you can see in their reaction is that the reason why, Crystal, I realize that they have such a large stake in Twitter and are on the board of directors yeah. is because they need to control mm -hmm. the political organ through which their politics is mediated in their country. Yes. And I can't believe it because it cuts directly against the original promise of Twitter. I'm, I'm going to be talking about it in my monologue about free speech, about right. the ab ability of the internet to serve as dissidents. So to allow these Saudi despots, these people who chop people's heads off and treat women in ways that you can't even believe, to own an American publicly traded company and then try and work against in our system, our financial system, to protect their hold over 70 million people and a huge proportion of the world's oil supply. This is the most corrupt view as to how legal this all is. I and the kingdom reject your offer. How about we reject the kingdom? That's well, my answer. First of all, yeah. Sagar, are yeah. you okay? Do yeah. we need to have a Taylor Lorenz style <laughs> public airing right, of right, right. your how you've been bullied online? Yes, that's let right. me know, know if you're yeah. able to continue I'll let with you the know. segment. Here's okay. my plan. I just never want to go back to <laughs> the Gulf. Uh, sorry, people, your country sucks. Just don't read your mentions, yeah. that's all. Um, it's very revealing because this the Saudis having a gigantic stake in a company that obviously is central to their discourse, but mm -hmm. more significantly for us, is central yes. to our discourse. I mean, right. this is where elite opinion mm -hmm. gets made, um, which is why, you know, there's such a freak out over this and why Elon is so, you know, interested in what's going on with Twitter. Twitter is really the hub of elite discourse and opinion making in the U.S. And so the fact that the Saudis having a major stake and being, according to them, the like one of the largest shareholders, that goes by without any very little yeah. concern. Shouldn't a lot of people be like, hey, hey, uh, whoa, wh that's a big problem. <laughs> What's yeah. happening here? Exactly. Um, but that's sort of like, oh, we're okay with that because yeah. I guess they're much more comfortable with um, the re any regime of censorship mm. than they ultimately are with a regime of actual free speech. Um, and to your point about how focused the Saudis have been on Twitter, I had forgotten this until this whole incident. Remember, they had there were a couple of Twitter employees who were arrested. Oh, right, Saudi spies. As yeah. They were Saudi spies. Yeah. yeah, and so, and they had access to all kinds of, you know, data that should be kept private about users who are on Twitter who may have been critical of um, the Saudis. So uh, they were accused by the Justice Department of using their positions, their access to Twitter's internal systems to aid Saudi Arabia by obtaining information on American citizens and Saudi dissidents who oppose the policies of the kingdom and its leaders. So... Again, I think it's revealing as to uh, which sort of directionally, which ideologies 
uh, American elites find very threatening. Uh, the cozy relationship with Saudi obviously is always there, and some, somehow they get a pass on all their uh, wars and, and uh, atrocities and human rights violations because of how much money flows through American pockets mm-hmm. coming from the kingdom. And um, just the utter corruption of all of it, I think, is what's really on display here. It disgusts me. It, it really disgusts me. And I remember confronting that with uh, Brian Fogel's documentary, The Dissident. This yeah. guy, and we had him on the show, by the way. People can go back and watch it. This guy created one of the best documentaries in the history of Netflix, Icarus. Won an Oscar, made the Netflix documentary team, makes this incredible documentary on on Jamal Khashoggi, the killing, exposing the Saudi regime, and nobody will buy it. Netflix, pass, Amazon, Prime, Jeff Bezos' company, who was Jamal Khashoggi's boss, passes on the documentary for his streaming service. Why? Because he wanted to buy Souk.com in Saudi Arabia, mm-hmm. which is their uh, able uh, their online retailer. It's repulsive to me, watching the way that anti-Saudi dissidents is just completely squeezed out, and nobody talks about it. And, you know, good on Elon. Look, I don't know what his motivations are, but at least here, people need to realize how much power the Saudis have in our country. And it's a very good... Um, A good reminder, especially, you know, in the midst of all of these high gas prices. Cable news is ripping us apart, dividing the country, making it impossible to function as a society, and making it impossible to know just what is true and what is false. But the good news is they are failing and they know it. That is why we're building something new, a new mainstream, a healthier one, something more trustworthy, something that we are going to need in one of the most pivotal times in American history. We are building up here for the midterms, for the upcoming presidential election, but we need your help. So if you can help us out by becoming a premium member today at breakingpoints.com, we're trying to change America for the better and the entire world. So what are you waiting for, guys? Go to breakingpoints.com and sign up and help us build a new mainstream.